Hello, my name is Henry Snyder. Due to a conflicting medical appointment, this presentation is pre-recorded. I won't be taking questions at the meeting. This presentation is about a semester long project lab. The second semester laboratory of an introductory physics course was replaced by a full semester project lab in which students built and tested underwater remotely operated vehicles, ROVES. This lab was intended to provide a very different educational experience as compared to traditional labs. Its purpose is not to replace the traditional lab. The basic idea was to make the lab into a more like a workplace environment for the students. Traditional laboratory has a limited time of two to three hours. As a narrow scope, you do a single experiment, you validate physical laws, you start with working equipment, you follow a scientific method scheme, and typically you need only limited knowledge of your apparatus. The project laboratory has much more time. So you can test, debug, fix, make mistakes, build entire systems. And because you build the entire system, you have a broad, more broad understanding of component parts and the system. Why pick a rove project? Why pick the topic of a rove? Well, there are, there are many topics you could choose. The uh, best explanation of the reason why I picked roves is in the following quote. The person says that when I am asked what I do for a living, my reply that I run a company which operates remotely controlled submarines always arouses interest. And that's certainly what I want to do for students. Make them interested in what they're doing. Make it exciting for them. There are several interesting characteristics of a Rove project. It's challenging. Water and electricity don't mix. Students are faced with underwater problems and hardware that they're not familiar with. The Rove has unusual capabilities. It lets you be underwater 24 seven. Piloting a Rove is a no risk immersion of yourself in a new and very different environment. The row structure that I used is simple PVC pipe, which is easy to build, modify, and recycle. The system is shown on the left. It's a 12 volt battery with fuses, a row pilot who normally faces the wall. And he's not testing and he's in a competition. You're supposed to only look at the monitor, which sees what the row camera is seeing. The top side control unit is connected through a tether to the onboard system. The tether is a 30 to 35 foot long stranded internet cable, actual multiple, multiple cables, probably three or four. And the rove in the pool has to have something to do. So in this case, it's searching for alien crabs. Upside controller is one of three major project tasks to be done. It has a computer, the Arduino. The Arduino is responsible for reading out the potentiometers. There are two of them on the joystick and the potentiometer that serves for up-down control. The joystick serves for right, left, forward, back control. The mega, the Arduino, is responsible for interpreting those readings from the, from the joystick and the potentiometer. Now, the Arduino does not have the, the power to drive the motors, so you need separate units called motor drivers, which provide the higher current, two to three amps, two to five amps, for the Rove motors.
Second major task is device testing. You could take all the parts of the row and put it all together and hope that it runs, but you might have trouble. So we have the students test all the devices. So they have some basic understanding of how they work and what the software is like that interfaces to the units. This is very helpful for later on if they encounter problems, they can retest things. The third task is the onboard system. It holds a computer, sensors, and gripper control. We use a water cooler or a tub to test for leaks. The you would think that maybe in a pool, you would want higher pressure. You would want to test with higher pressure. But we found the water cooler is really quite good once you identify a leak and fix it. Um, seemed like that fixed the problem for, for the pool also. There were few leaks once, once things had been repaired. But that, that is not guaranteed. You can also pressurize the enclosure with air and verify no leaks. The enclosure is a three inch PVC pipe and it uses O-rings and glue to keep water out. For schematics, the student handout guides tell the students in step-by-step -step detail how to build things, but that doesn't give them a good feel for how things are connected. They use, we use schematics to explain things to the students. In this case, we see the top side unit has a computer, a joystick, three motor drivers, right, left, forward, back control motors, up, down motors, gripper motor. On board, we have a smaller Arduino R3 computer, Arduino Uno, temperature sensor, uh, computer memory for storing data, pressure sensor, luminosity sensor, water sensor for leaks, a compass and accelerometer. Here the students at the pool, they get to the pool using a uh, contraption that we built, which is a convertible hand truck with a PVC structure built up that provides cubbies for the roves. So you can put multiple roves on one, one hand truck. Uh, that works pretty well. Once the students get to the pool, one of their first, first things they want to do is adjust the rows for buoyancy. Uh, if you look carefully at the picture, you'll notice some bare feet. They should not have bare feet. That's an oversight on my part. They should have closed toe shoes only. Uh, lifeguard is present at all pool sessions. No one has fallen in yet. This gives you an idea of what, how much things cost. There are lots of parts. So the total is about $3,000. Uh, most of the parts, almost all of them are recyclable. So you can use them again and again. Uh, in my experience, we don't burn out many things so that we don't need many replacements. Uh, the one thing I do not recycle is wires. I guess some of them could be used again, but I, I don't use them. With a developing a lab like this, you, you want student evaluation You want students to be able to critique what they're going through. The evaluation forms were designed for traditional laboratories and provide some interesting insights. 
So the, the form was not made or changed to adapt to this different kind of laboratory. Uh, we'll go through the lower scores on the list. Uh, first of all, number five, which is uh, a little negative. Did the lab experience help you to understand topics in lecture? Well, 2.4 is low, and I can understand that. We didn't try very hard to connect the two together. It could be done. Topics from the Rove could be mentioned in lecture, and topics from lecture could be mentioned in the Rove in explanation. More of that could be done easily. Number six, did the lab, your lab experience give you a taste of doing real science? 3.7, it's positive. I think one of the reasons it may be low is because real science for the students usually means traditional labs. They're looking for procedure, data analysis, writing lab reports, as a standard way of doing, doing real science. And we're trying to change that, admittedly. Number eight, did your lab experience help you to learn to write lab reports? Well, we did focus on progress reports as opposed to lab reports. And I think we found that the students, most of the students had problems figuring out what had to be in a, in a progress report. Progress reports report not only your progress, but your ideas and reflections that you have about what you're doing. Number nine, did your lab experience show you how to do analysis of data? Well, 3.3 is positive, but more, more data analysis could be added. And 24, how much guidance was given for writing and revising reports? Well, we did not revise, did not let them, let's ask students to revise their reports. I did grade their reports and put numerous comments in their in the progress reports. I think I, I attribute the low score basically to the fact that they didn't have a firm grasp of what a good progress report should be. So in general, the evaluations, I think, are very helpful for judging, judging the project. Most of the Rove project equipment was funded through the District of Columbia Space Grant Consortium. My thanks to Doug Levin, previously of NOAA, and the Marine Advanced Technology Education Center of Monterey, California, for guidance and training. Thank you very much for your attention.